so we're in the process of meeting each day, uh, talking about how we're going to get diplomatic community to move from one country to the next. Um, our process is very simple. It's an online course. Uh, there's a small fee. You get ordained as a minister. You become a ministry partner with us. And then you're able to move from each location around the world. We already have 127 countries on board. So we're creating a large network of apostolic and ministries around the world so that if you wanted to be an evangelist and you felt called, we have 127 locations that you can go visit in the next year or so. This means that wherever you are, whatever country you travel to within our, within our demographics, this means that you have a family, you have a home, you have safety, you have provision, you have a place you can go and stay. You have fathers, spiritual fathers that have been ministering for a long time that oversee large economic groups. Uh, the man I spoke to in Brazil oversees millions of people already. He's well known, speaks Portuguese in such a beautiful language. Portuguese, when it's spoken, it's so beautiful, it's so rich. Uh, this is from fast traveling out to New York next month, out where Thomas is to kind of see where he lives and kind of spend time with him. It says he lives in a little big town. <laughs> he got the best sweet tea in the world. <laughs> he said sweet tea, you got my attention. Uh, beloved, you know, there's a lot of things that we're facing in the world today um, that, you know, obviously the world is trying to address. But as believers, we already know that this is the time where we don't give up on those people. I was just in the grocery store getting stuff for us, and it's, you know, it's a little chaotic in there. The baggers are, don't know if they're going to heaven or hell. They don't know if they got a job tomorrow. So I tried to just bless this bagger, and he was very reluctant to want to accept my, my love. But it didn't offend me. When I got in my car, and I started loading the groceries that are back here for you guys, so if you need water, food, you guys didn't eat dinner tonight, please go back, we got sandwiches, chips, dip, vegetables, we got fruit, everything you can imagine back here already for you guys, okay? But as I loaded everything into my car, I said, this isn't the time I give up on these people. This is the time I press in. This is the time when the enemy is testing both sides of the camp. Amen. Are you in or are you out? Amen. Do you have a sound mind or do you live in fear? So how do we teach the people that are around us, that are looking and wondering? I mean, I, I, it's just, we can't become uh, Mike Bickle, a couple of my spiritual fathers, we just keep praying. We don't jump into a camp of, okay, this church closed down because of something. Oh, they have a healing service. They don't want to do it right now. Because we need to pray for them. Because it says in the word that we will anoint them with oil. The elders of the church will pray over you and sickness will flee. There's so many accounts in the Bible where people were afflicted with fear. They didn't know if their daughter was going to live. They didn't know if their friend, the centurion guard, in the book of Matthew, when he was talking to that general, the Lord says, man, I've never met a man with so much faith. And the guy's telling him, you know, Jesus, me and you are kind of the same. We're in charge of a lot of people. And he says, you know, because of your faith and the measure of your faith, your friend shall be healed. And his friend of polio was healed instantly. He didn't have to lay hands on him. He didn't have to walk into his house. He just had to know that the faith and the measure of the believer who loved and had a relationship with the father, that he would hear the heart of the man and that he would heal his friend. Not only that is the testimony, but Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus, Jesus' mom came to him and said, son, I need you to do something for me. He said, woman, it's not my hour, not my time. She said to the servants, just listen to whatever he says. He says, go fill those jugs with water for me. The first creative miracle that he ever done, one of them. And those servants watched that water get turned into wine. And at the, and at the wedding feast, they served the wine to the man. He drank the wine. He said, God, he saved the good wine. 
It's not like he gave him like some poor wine or some weak wine or some vinegary wine. When the man tasted it, he was like, this is the best wine. This is the stuff that I've been waiting for. I didn't want that not authentic wine. I wanted the real wine. And here it is in my midst. Jesus got out of the boat. There was a man among the tombs. Everyone said, we can't control this man. He's out of control. Jesus went up to him and said, who are you? He said, my name is Legion. He said, oh, okay. There's 10,000 of me inside one person, maybe more. 10,000 demons occupied one man who could break chains and lived amongst the catacombs and terrified people. Jesus called from heaven and said, cleanse this man. They spoke through the man's mouth. Why are you here to hearken us? It's not our time. Jesus said, I'll give you a choice where you want to go. They said, send us into the swine. The herd of swine were filled with the demons instantly. The man was set free. But as the swine were filled with demons, they were provoked to run off the cliff into the water and drown. Welcome. <laughs> instantly, he was being walked through a city where a woman believed with all of her might, a Jewish woman, I, I, heard, I could hear her praying, Lord, I want a husband. I want to be clean. Please send my Savior so that, so that I can crawl on my knees through the dirt and touch the hem of his garment. Jesus stopped in his tracks and said, who's touched me? And she said, it's me. He says, I felt the energy and the anointing come out of me. But for your faith, you shall be healed. And instantly she stopped bleeding. But the greatest part about it was that one of the priests that was in the city was walking with Jesus the entire time to go to his house where his child was dying. So Jesus, what did he teach from the beginning? He taught that his power of healing and saving. Then he taught faith to a woman who believed and her answer to prayer came on the 12th hour. Now, all of a sudden, a man who was standing there watching him perform these miracles didn't come to him and say, Jesus, come on, you know my daughter's dying, man, don't heal these people. He was teaching a priest faith. Faith to believe that his daughter was only sleeping. And when he showed up on the scene, they laughed at him, and they mocked him, and they said, there's no reason to go in there. That's the end of it. He said, I don't think so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. I'm going to ask some of you to leave and go over here. And I'm going to invite some of you to come inside with me. As soon as he walked in, she sat up. He said, see, I was always sleeping. I couldn't imagine being a father watching this one. My daughter Mia have febrile seizure after febrile seizure. And me and my wife having her catatonic laying in a hospital bed. But the doctor's telling us she will never wake up again. Me and my wife, we held hands together over her and we just cried and prayed. And we invited the Holy Spirit to come in. Within an hour, she was awake. She ran into walls for a couple days and didn't really talk well, but that didn't matter. The miracle happened and it took place. It defied all the laws that we all believe in. And look at, there she is. Big smile on her face. So we have lived through this with our children being put almost to death. For the works that I did in Kansas City, the Lord said, I want you to get rid of the witchcraft inside of the prayer room. And I did. I called my wife on the phone. And I, after the fifth, sixth day where I could barely breathe. And I mean, I was dying, guys. By the time I got to the hospital, I pulled my truck up into the hospital. I fell out of my truck and I crawled on my knees inside the ER to a hospital I'd never been to before. The guy said, oh man, this guy's a lot sicker than me. They picked me up, they hooked me to an EKG machine. They're like, you're not having a heart attack. I was like, I didn't think so. I'm like, I can't breathe. So I told the doctor my story and he listened for 45 minutes. And he said, my dad's a minister. And as a young boy, I used to watch my dad cast demons out of people. And they used to attack me too. So I'll be back in a minute. 
So the nurse walked in with this concoction, this plastic cup. She said, I don't know what this is. But he told me to give it to you and told me, told, told me you need to drink this. And as soon as I drank it, within 30 minutes, I could breathe again. And they gave me some medication, right, to take home. And after a while, I was like, what kind of medicine am I taking? So I looked it up online, all placebos. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even real medicine. But from the faith, just, 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 for, just so I could have it and know that God is real. And I have mercy on those witches. When the Lord asked me, what did he want me to do? I said, mercy. I said, out in the middle of the night, standing in Missouri, rain on me, looking at the sky at two in the morning. I said, Lord, you are the God of mercy. And pour out your grace on them. That worked up until the point where I was almost dead, and they said, no more. They've come against my anointed too many times, and I'm gonna handle this for you, son. And he cleaned them out, just so the rest of them would know what was to come if they continued. The daughters, the sons, and the dad all became members of the International House of Prayer. They all signed up for an intern class and they became part of God's church. Homeless after homeless after homeless. When Jen met me, I had 23 homeless people living with me. The Lord would point them out to me and tell them to live with me. Guys that were murderers, thieves, criminals. Guys that had no teeth and some teeth. Some people just didn't even have shoes. I remember the first time we bought, I brought Gary to the house for the second story. And the Lord said, I want you to wash their feet. And I remember I didn't know what I was doing, guys. Hey guys, God bless you. So glad you're here. <laughs> and, um, and so I didn't know what to do. So I went in my bathroom. I grabbed the, the trash can. I grabbed some Comet. I grabbed some, you know, some, uh, some soap. And I didn't know what to do. But I put the chair out on my balcony because I knew that if this guy, you know, he had been walking around for so long out on the streets. that I knew that when he came into my house, and he took me shower. I was going to wreck everything. So I was like, oh, die. You know, because I was in a prayer meeting. And oh, it's just a story. So, so I go and I, I take his shoes off. And. I instantly get a whiff of what it's like to not wash your feet for so long. And I instantly start crying. And I'm going, oh my God. Then I went to pull his socks off. And when I pulled his sock off, three layers of skin came with it. Wow. Then the next sock came off with three more layers of skin. And I vomited over the railing. But the whole time I was throwing up, I was tickling his toes. And he's telling me, please don't do this. This is too embarrassing. And I said, this piggy went to the store. This little piggy went to the library. This little piggy went to the church. And he started giggling. <laughs> so I anointed his feet and washed them and scrubbed them clean and got all that stuff off. And I started taking inventory of the things that I needed to get for him. He needed new socks. He needed new shoes. We needed to trim his toenails for him. His face needed to be shaved, so we needed a brand new razor. So I started reaching out to churches and saying, hey, listen, I've got these guys that need stuff. But within a week, we had so many things. Amen. Jackets, pants, Amen. shoes. Amen. And we became a community within my house. That's right. Because my landlord showed up one time. Darren, <laughs> I heard there's 23 or 25 people in this house. I said, well, oh, come look, walk in. She walks in, she goes, this place is pretty clean. I don't think there's 23 people here. I think the neighbors are telling me a lie. But what the Holy Spirit had done the night before is he woke me up and I got all of us up in the middle of the night and I gave them a sermon about how we're going to be clean. And when we move out in the morning, we're going to put all of our stuff in the cabinets and we're going to make the house look like it's empty and clean because there's a test coming. And as a team, as a group of individuals, homeless people with me, people on their destiny. We detailed the entire house. We laid down on light sheets. We slept, we got up, and we dispersed out the back, out the front, out the sides. When the landlord came, she noticed that everything was clean and we made it through that storm. Amen. But every single one of those individuals got sent into circuit riders. They got sent into YWAM ministry. 
Two of them got married, had brand new teeth. I mean, their teeth were so, they didn't have teeth. They were 24 years old. They never had parents. They never had anyone tell them how to brush their teeth. When I was down on Main Street one time, there was a man driving a Lamborghini down the street. I said, wow, that's a nice car. To myself, I was like, he could sell that car and take care of 500 people for a year. But then I was like, you know, the Lord blessed him with his efforts. So maybe I should be cool about this. So he, as he walked by me to get a coffee, I said, sir, I go, that's a nice car you have. He goes, that's nice. He goes, what do you do? I go, I hand out Bibles and I just want to pray for you. He goes, really? I go, no, authentically, I want to pray for you. The word, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge for him about his hotels and about how people didn't want to live in his home. And he started crying. And he said to me, he said, you're right. I have partnered with Madonna and I did partner with Dennis Rodman and I did build those hotels and I do make $500,000 a day sometimes. He's all, I make so much money. I don't know what to do with it. I can't trust people with it. So what the point of my story is, is that even though they didn't have anything, they still needed Jesus. And even because he had everything, he still needed Jesus. There was no difference. So what the Lord showed me in 10 years of evangelism on the streets is that everyone is broken and everyone's lost and everyone faces a challenge. And if we're not the church to come alongside them and to help them and encourage them, then we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Hallelujah. It's in my heart. I mean, you guys are hearing my heart. This isn't the word of God. This is just what this, this is what the God's telling me to tell you guys. Come on. We're not going to close our doors. Amen. Our meetings are going to continue to grow and go. Come on, man. We're going to still send people out. We're going to baptize people. We're going to see people saved. We're going to evangelize Anaheim. We're going to evangelize Huntington Beach. I'm going to go to New York. We're going to evangelize New York, real small town. We're going to get them all saved. Amen. <laughs> There's people in here with businesses that need to be supported. Yes. There's people in here with family members that are struggling, but they need to be supported. Come on. The enemy tries so hard to dismantle the ones that have so much favor. Come on. I'm serious. He tries to lock me up with chains and bind me, and, and I just laugh. It might work for a split second, but I'll tell you what, I'll make it right through it. So don't be worried about being coughing and getting a little cold. That's, this is just easy for the Lord to heal. Yeah. Think about the ones that are in the hospital right now that don't even have lungs. How about they don't even have eye sockets? How about they were born with no arms and no legs? So we have to, we have to stretch ourselves at this time and this hour to look to the Holy Spirit and not the news media. Yes. Don't read it. Yeah. Rebuke it but still love the people that post it. Yeah. Just because it's there doesn't mean we can't enjoy our life and have a good time. Me and my wife can't hug each other and tell each other we love each other. That we can't sit at our dinner table and be happy for the food that we do have. Yes. The Lord has filled our, our, our houses with, with everything. It's a pandemic, people are going to stores and running through and me and my wife were like, but we have food for months because the Lord told us to prepare for this hour. Yeah. The Lord said, fill your lamp and don't let the oil run out. Yes. Don't be caught sleeping when I come because it's too late. Yes. So as a church, we prepare. As a body, we prepare. We become family and we look out for one another. When you were sick, sister, we were praying for you nonstop. Yeah, your husband's videos, I'm weeping, my wife's crying. We're just saying, Lord, Angels, 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 and here you are. Amen. See? Right. Turn me around to pray. Amen. Made me forget about my circumstances for someone else. Right? right? Yes. These guys are posted in Africa. They need a kitchen. You know, they're trying to shut down an orphanage because of a kitchen. And I'm thinking, Lord, you're the only, you're you're the one that could provide for this kitchen. That's right. That's and so, as you guys can see, the Lord's provided for this building. When we first came here, it didn't look like this at all. Me and my wife, we got a download from the Holy Ghost, built a brand new stage, put lights up, televisions, put all brand new carpet, built the foyer in the back area back there. We're going to build out this side over here too. Sound systems, things that we need. The Lord brought our worship team on a Holy Spirit note. I mean, this beautiful wife. 
and my brother here that loves to play music. These guys' hearts are filled with passion for the Lord. That's right. You guys are going to hear worship here in a second. I love this man in the back who's just walking and interceding. God, it just reminds me of the angel being here. Praise the Lord. So in 1 John chapter 3, it says, Behold, what number, what, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we will be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew not him. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be? But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's right. How many people here cry and say, I just want to go home? And then we say, God, use us for our purpose. This is my cry every day. I'm like, Lord, just take me home. I miss my animals. I miss heaven. I miss talking to you. I miss seeing what you do. I miss you. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for the sin is the transgression of the law. And we know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Those of you who are carrying a burden today, lust, Persuasion, confusion, adultery, divination, theft, bad words out of the mouth. You carry these burdens deep inside of us. All of us are sinners, all sin. But even the enemy uses these tactics to try to throw us off track. So no matter what it is that you're facing and dealing with, just know that he takes our sins away. And I don't want you to feel like you're weighted down by it. I want you to ask for prayer tonight. I want you to be delivered from whatever it is. Come forth with boldness. Come forth with it and just lay it at the altar. For those of you who come tonight and haven't forgiven somebody for the sins and you hold bitterness in your heart to a family member, to a dog, an animal, to something, where you just say, you know what? God bless you, brother. Where you're just, you're holding on to this and you don't know how to let it go. Please, tonight, as a family, let's let it go. We want to fight for marriages. We want to fight for marriages, Lord. Keep our family together, Father God. And we stay away from my marriage. Stay away from my bride. She is my beautiful gift. And no one's going to steal that from me. You're not going to lie to me and put someone in front of me. That's not my wife. She is not my wife. That is my wife. This is my wife until I die. This is whom I love and this is whom I pour out. This is my first relationship right here before all things. I haven't been here for a couple weeks because we've been working on our marriage. It's the most important thing I can do is work on my marriage and the love for my wife. And then my children run in the room and they, my son goes, mommy, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, mommy. And when I get in my car in the morning, I'm like, that's the greatest gift in the world. <laughs> that there's two for him to be there. Some of us don't have that. But I want to let you know that this, this group of people here, they're your family. Jesus calls you daughter and he calls you son. Oh. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive that the love of Yahweh, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. 
but also hath the world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his vows of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of Yahweh in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards Yahweh? And whatsoever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments, and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he has given us, filled with the Holy Spirit hearing from God, talking to angels, going to heaven and getting the rhema and man of word. Each one of us has a gift and that gift will grow and become more powerful. Don't be ashamed of your gift. I want to pray in tongues, pray in tongues. I want to lay hands, lay hands. I see things, tell us what you see. Let's work together. It's like operating a vehicle with no arms and no legs and no eyes. How are we going to get there? I need you to see for me. I need you to feel for me. I need you to hold for me. I need you to watch for me. I need you to intercede for me. These are the gifts that the Lord has given all of us. Don't be ashamed of your gift. Never let anyone steal it from you. The words that people will use is like my mom, I was telling them today, when, when, my, when Lonnie Frisbee touched my dad, my mom put my dad into UCLA Medical Center. He was hearing things and talking to angels and a powerful encounter with God. <laughs> Knocked his socks off. Knocked my whole family socks off. Pulled us all in the living room and said, but God gave me a vision of one of them I went to hell and one of them my whole family went to heaven. He said, we're going to Calvary Chapel every Sunday. <laughs> and we all surrendered our lives. 1976, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Come on. Young boy, hearing Chuck Smith say, God is a defender and he will defend you and he will be there for you in the night terrors. He will be there in the day. He will be there in the night. He will never leave you and never forsake you. I got out of that chair and I ran to the altar. And I walked up to a man in a nice orange suit, long hair, hippie man. And he said, son, can I help you? And I said, I want that guy he's talking about. He said, oh, good. You're going to go to the auditorium. Where's the rest of your family? I go, I don't know. But I want that guy. Where is he? I need to meet him. <laughs> and I did that day in the auditorium when I got baptized. We went to the bookstore in Calvary Chapel and we got our stickers and our little puppy stickers and our rainbow stickers. I got my little Bible cover, a little Velcro Bible cover. And I got my little tabs that slid into my Bible. We, we set, put each section in so we could flip through all the different sections of the word. And, and beloved, I just want to encourage you guys, you know, that that's night we got a great guest speaker. We've got a great worship team um, that's just running on the, the fuel of the Holy Ghost right now. So uh, if you guys can all just kind of move forward, kind of stand up for me. Um, I know you guys want to sit down during worship, but I really believe this is a time where we stand. Uh, the altar is open for you guys. So if you guys want to come up and you guys want to you know, put your elbows on the altar and you want to celebrate God this way, if you guys want to come up front and fill this area and raise your hands and sing praises to the lord please do um, we're gonna we're gonna get into some worship right now hallelujah thank you guys for everything jesus thank you holy spirit come we're excited for what's going to happen tonight thank you father god for your praise thank you for your worship thank you for touching your children lord father god thank you for what you're going to do May the sound resonate past these walls into the hearts and the homes of the people in Anaheim. Draw us to you, Father God. 
for you are our living hope.
release your angel. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Raise up your lovers. Let your light shine.
every room, even the ones that are hidden from you. Sweep it out, Lord. Clean it out. It's yours. The revelation of the men of old praying in the book of Acts. Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would be exalted. In the book of Psalms, to the psalmist, you are my everything. For you have held the enemy back from me. The men have fallen at my feet. You have prepared me for the battle. You have made me victorious. You've carved the sky for me to marvel over. You fill my lungs with breath of air. You subdue my enemies when they approach. You've protected me when I was weak. You sheltered me in the storm. When the waters rose, so did your boat. When the waters rose, the boat rose. Noah and his family, they were set on high. May your train fill the entire earth. May the Lord's train cover the entire earth. Lord, we invite power to come into this room right now. We call forth power into this room right now in Jesus' name. Lord, it would shake the nation. Lord, it would shake the environment. Father God, we call forth your Shekinah glory to come. The oil would pour out. Manifestations of gold, silver, gems. Lord, your holy presence. We invite, we woo you, Father, please. Come in a mighty wind, in a mighty power. Your authentic love, Lord. That you would fill your people to overflowing, Lord. Nothing outside of your will will last in this room. <laughs> Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. My legs are on fire burning. Whoa. 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 Joy. 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 We call forth the measure of joy. Even though I walk in the valley of the 
shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil. And you prepare a table with my enemies before me. You heal the brokenhearted and you bind up their wounds. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bind up the brokenhearted and set the captive free and to proclaim an acceptable year of the Lord. He's here tonight. And he's here to change us from the inside out. And I was praying earlier and so the Lord said, I'm going to release power tonight. The spirit of power. There's seven spirits of God. And one of those spirits is the spirit of power. And that's going to be released upon his people tonight. And the kingdom of heaven is here. <laughs> it's here. And what does that entail? Sometimes we got to kind of shed off all the things that we think we know. And start to imagine what would it look like to be in the kingdom of heaven right now. And that should be our focus first. Not later, not tomorrow, not next week, but now. Because that's what the, the Bible tells us. For seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And so everything that's available in the kingdom is available to me now. Because Jesus said, repent. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Change the way we do business. Because it's here. It's not coming. It's here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. This... This house is there's there's an anointing here. There's a fire here. here. I saw the angel revival <laughs> in he's singing holy holy and I'm saying I'm here and wakey 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 wakey. Did you know that the angel of revival in the Welsh revival was an angel named Wakey Wakey? And that angel is here. Whoa. There's an awakening here in the West Coast. This place is never going to be the same again. There's there's something very special that's happening here in this place tonight. And you know, there was three guys that were going to send in the fire: Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What did they say? Our God saved us. Our God will save us. But if He don't, how many is there? Just the fact that you're here tonight means you're there. That's right. <laughs> My God will save me, but if he don't, I'm going home. <laughs> See, to live is Christ and to die is, is gain. Right? My life is Christ. Because it's Christ in me, which is the hope of glory. And it's Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. There's some amazing ministries in this place tonight. Oh, yeah. And tonight is tonight is very divine. It's it's been set up before the foundation of the world for such a time as this. Yes. For now. And um, it's quite amazing when, when you when you see it in the spirit what's actually happening. Oh. It's very powerful. Yeah. There's, there's a real unity here tonight. And I, know, I know you were talking about earlier, the upper room, the 120. See, 
What they had in common was everything. They had seat. There's one God. Amen. There's one God. Hallelujah. And there's not this, that, and the other. It's what he says. Hallelujah. And that's it because he's saying the same thing to you. He's saying to me. But see, there's a place where the rubber meets the road. It's not just good enough to hear God. Oh, come on. <laughs> we're not just people that hear God. We're, we're people that actually walk it out. <laughs> and I'm sitting over here in the chair and I, I start tasting honey. Do you know what honey is? Honey is, honey is revelation. The spirit of revelation and wisdom is here tonight. It's amazing. There was so many different ways that, that I was going in the spirit. There's, there was a hundred there was a hundred different things happening here all at one time. It's, it's like going to a smorgasbord where you got everything. And that's what he's prepared for us. <laughs> There's miracles in this place tonight. You know, God's healing blood disease. God, God is touching people tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. God's equipping people tonight. Yes. It's my prayer that you don't walk out of here the same way you came in. Amen. See, because if I pray for you and you fall down, that's great. But what happens when you get up? That's what I want to see. I'm a, I don't just want to see you fall down. I don't care if you fall down. <laughs> what I care about is when you get up and you walk out of here, whether you start seeing in the spirit, whether you start evangelizing, whether whatever you do, let it be for the glory of God. Yes. Because today's 315, when we look at, at John 315, it's, it's about him. It's about his glory. And then they go down and say, God so loved the world. But see, it's first things first. First the kingdom, first him. And he's my boss. And there's a time and a place that I get with him where he says, I no longer call you my servant. For a servant does not know what the master does. For I call you the friend. Come lean your head on my shoulder, and that's where I want to be. As he is, so are you in this world. There's a place in the Holy Spirit. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We've been in churches, Chris and I, where they carried people out at midnight because they couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, what's going on with them? And, and the pastor says, you don't know how bad she needed that. Amen. The woman was in torment. And, and there's times of refreshing. I love those times of refreshing. I love, I no. love those times Get of down. equipping. Yes. But what good is it if we aren't doing anything with it? Right. And that has become my message over the past few months because I've been to meetings and places where where we roll on the floor and we laugh and we, we do all these things, but then there's no there's no going, there's no doing, there's no there's no real fruit of it. Are they seeing love? That's one thing in, in, that, that I really saw in this ministry. Spending just a few <laughs> few days with these guys and these guys. We, I've known them for years on Facebook. But man, when you sit down and, and, and really get to, to, to have a relationship, you, you really get to see some things. Right. And when I go to war, these are the kind of guys I want with me. Yes, yes. Because you hear many people say, who are you submitted to? I'm submitted to Christ, but I'll submit to you if you lay down your life for me. That's right. Because just what Jesus said, there's no greater love than to lay down your life. That's right. And we're, we're all called to submit to each other as brothers and sisters. There's no like cousins and uncles and this kind of stuff. <laughs> we're sons, we're daughters, see? And that's what happens when we're reborn. We become a son, a daughter, a child. 
But there's a difference between a child and a son or a daughter, and that's called maturity. Yes. And that's where the body of Christ needs to be. Mature sons and daughters are going to shake the earth because the whole world moans and cries out for the manifest presence of the sons and daughters of God to arise and take their authority and take their position. There's a, there's a whole world of the church closing their doors, clo closing healing meetings, closing this, closing that. When they're supposed to be leading the world. That's right. That's right. And the world's supposed to look at us and say, hey, look at those guys. They love each other. See, because the Bible says that they'll be known for their great love one to another. That's right. And perfect love casts out all fear. Because Break my God up. will save me, but even if he doesn't, I'm going home. See, there's no more fear of death because I believe. That's right. Break it I off. believe. Yes. And so fear has no torment on me. <laughs> what can the devil do with that? Nothing. And that's where we're called to be. Is when the perfect love Jesus Christ makes his abode in you. And you learn to love. See, because it's not yours until you give it away. That's right. You can't have it until you're able to give it away. <clears throat> That's why the, the first two commandments, love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your money, your strength. But what's the second? Yeah. <laughs> it's that when one. you give it away. And that's when it becomes yours. That's when you own it. Because that's when it becomes who you are. And not what you do. And we spend a lot of time chasing the hand of God. When he says, seek my face. Come sit with me, son. I want to teach you some things. I want to take you higher. I'm calling you higher. And tonight, there's, there's a calling of higher tonight. There's a high calling. And there's a knocking. See, because he sent them out, right? He, he sent them out and they said, well, you know, we're busy. I just got married. I just bought a house. I just bought a field. I did this. I did that. I got all this stuff going on. And we all know these people. But he says, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. God wrecked my life. In 2014, I was never the same from that day forth. I pray that happens tonight with you. Amen. I don't want to do this alone. <laughs> I don't want to do it alone. See, we're made for each other. We, we are made for each other. And it's when we learn to love one another and our differences. And it's when we focus on what we're supposed to do that we become strong. And see, without, when we're sitting around bickering at each other, we're not actually doing what we're called to be doing. Because if you know the destiny that God's put in you, you would never, ever want to be anything else. And, and I know that, uh, you know, there's, it's like you have the biggest church in L.A., why? Because you go minister to the homeless and there's 60,000 on the street. That's right. Amen. That's your church. That's that's who you're ministering to. There's there's 100,000. There's a million. That's right. See, it's not about numbers. It's about, am I able to love the one that's in front of me without anybody else seeing? Okay. Yes. Come on. When I walk out and go to lunch with... <laughs> Pastor Darren, he's saying, hey, want to pray for somebody? Within two seconds, he's praying for a woman who's got a broken leg on the street. And there wasn't cameras around. There wasn't all this, these lights and cameras in action. It was a simple man moving in compassion. And the Bible says that Jesus moved in compassion and he healed them all. Right. See, there's a difference between... Compassion and sympathy. Sympathy says, I'm sorry for your luck, brother. Yeah. Yeah. But compassion says, I have to do something. I have to move on this. Yeah. 
And we're made with emotions because emotions move us. Come on. And the world says be angry because anger moves us. And that's what the devil wants you to believe. If you're no longer angry, you no longer have any power. But there's no power in this world that's greater than love. Because love empowers faith. That's right. Good word. And it's only when we can give it away is when we own it. And it's not ours, it's Him. It's the only way that we can receive is through Him. Because the world teaches us something different. The world says, well, be afraid. Be scared. Live in fear. Don't do this. Don't do that. Yeah, all right. Shut the door. But God says, I will never leave or forsake you. I am always with you. David said, if, if I make my, my bed in the gates of hell, you are there with me. That's See, right. he understood the revelation that his father loved him. Yes. And no matter what he did, that he would never leave or forsake him. That's right. And see, we must understand that our Father loves us. And it's not about what we do. It's about who we are. And the world says, you're only as good as your next sale. You're only good as the job you do. Your performance. Our Father in Heaven says, I love that one. I give everything. Heaven went bankrupt for you. And the devil wants you to believe you have to earn it. Yeah. See, because you do anything in this world for love. The firstborn baby. The first boyfriend or girlfriend. They do crazy things you would never do in your life for love. See, because love has more power than anything in this world or universe. Because God is love. And God is peace. So what does the enemy want to take from us? He wants to take our peace. And he wants us to think that love has to somehow be earned. When the Father gave it free on the cross. He just says, come to me. See, it's always the goodness of God that draws men to repent. And when you taste the good stuff, you don't want any of the dirt anymore. No. I live that life. I, I come from that life. I tried everything and, and everyone. <laughs> I wanted it all. I wanted, I wanted to do it all. And, but when I tasted the good stuff, everything else is, is, is dumb. It's garbage. That's right. It's because he's good. He's a good, good father. And see, Jesus came to restore all that's been lost. Everything. Everything that's been lost. It's John 10, 10, right? The thief came to kill, steal, rob, and destroy. But Christ came to give life and abundance. And he came to restore all that's been lost. What does that include? Everything. Not just our getting into heaven. It's a restoration of all things. That's his kingdom, that's his power, that's his glory. See, Adam walked side by side in the presence with God. That's where I want to be. I want to walk with God. I want to, I want to be in his presence in all the time. And we don't have to wait till we get into heaven to be there. That's right, right? We just have to put aside everything else we put above God. Amen. And put him first. See, there was a time <clears throat> when the people said this, you know, we want a king to rule over us. And God said, I don't want you to have a king. I want you to come to me, right? And man said, no, we want a king. His name was Saul, right? <clears throat> and how did that work for them? But God, right, in his goodness, he says, here's your king. We are coming into a time of the fifth and final kingdom. It's in the book of Daniel. And the kingdom of heaven is being established upon the earth. Amen. 
Right. And there's a divine alignment and assignment with the government of God. Yeah. I believe you can have as much of it as you want. But it's going to cost you. What's it going to cost you? Everything. See, because a dead man has no wants, he has no needs, he has no. Right. See, the old man has to die. In order to, to receive the new wine, you have to have the new wine skin, the reborn experience. You have to be born from above. But then the wine comes. You put the new wine in the old wine skin and it busts, it dies, it's done. See, you can't put the new wine skin in the old man, he has to die. God, just give me a house. God, just give me, God, just give me a car and I'm going to go evangelize. These kind of things. They're foolishness. God says, open your mouth and I'm going to fill it. Come on. He says, walk and I'm going to guide you. And we're like trying to tell God how to do it. Who's the boss, right? Jesus says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Why not call me uncle? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Whew, the fire is strong in here too. My God, we love you, Jesus. Today's a, a, a day of President Trump has declared a national day of prayer. You see, we should be that way every day. That's right. Yeah. We should live. But what, what are we without prayer? Where, where was Jesus? He'd go and minister, but then what'd he do? He'd go all night and he'd pray. And he said to his disciples, can't you pray? Why? Lest you be tempted? That's right. He says, can't you pray for an hour lest you be tempted? And it's our prayer that brings intimacy with the Father. And see, Jesus saw everything before it happened in his prayer room, in the kingdom, the bedroom. He says, I don't do anything unless I see the Father do it, unless he tells me to do it. That's where we're supposed to be. That's where we're going. Of course we're not there yet, but that's where we're going. Jesus made this prayer when he said, Father, I pray that you don't take them from the world, but you keep them from evil, that they shall become one. And you and I are one that they should become one with each other. The body of Christ, the bride of Christ, that Jesus is coming back for. Everybody's waiting for Jesus to come back for, and he says, I want my bride to get ready. Right. That's right. We are the bride of Christ, and each one of us has a different gift, a different feature, a different value. Look around, does anybody look like you? No, because that's, how, that's God's design. Imagine how boring it would be if everybody looked the same. God didn't build robots. You were beautifully and wonderfully made for a purpose, for a reason, for a destiny. And, and I believe many are going to be unlocked tonight. You know what happened with Paul? He had an encounter with Christ. It wrecked him, it changed him. And he was a Pharisee of Pharisee. He knew all the laws. He knew all the right things to say, all the right things to do, but he didn't know God. In the book of Luke 24, they walked with Jesus. They say, hey, what's going on? And Jesus said, hey, what's going on, guys? And they said, are you crazy? Are you the only one who doesn't know what's happening in Jerusalem? Don't you know about the great prophet who, who did all these miracles, signs, and wonders? Don't you know that? Are you stupid? And Jesus was messing with them. He was standing there walking with them. But they didn't know him. They didn't see him. Not until he unlocked them. Not until he opened them. Didn't our hearts burn? It burned. Didn't our hearts burn? See, God's building an army That's right. yeah. of wonder workers, of miracle workers, of evangelists, prophets, evangelists, apostles, 
pastors, teachers. Right? You can't do this stuff without the anointing. That's right. So God doesn't call the equips, he equips the call. Mm. See, it's, it's those ones that come to the table and say, Here I am. It's here I am, Lord. Isaiah. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am. Jesus, Son of David, don't pass me by. Here I am. I'm available. I'm here. I want this. And that's what he wants. Amazing some of the things I've seen just a few years. And it can't be done by man. It can only be done by him and through him and for him. That's right. Yes. But when you become a willing vessel, you, and you become willing to lay down those things, then God uses you mightily and powerfully. For his glory and his purpose, all things are made for him, by him, through him. And that's you and that's me. We're made for him and we're also made for each other. God's bringing a, a unity to the body of Christ. And that right now there's a huge separation in the church. There's a huge separation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the sheep and the goat, the wheat and the chaff. And who, who really believes? Who really believes? You know, just because I go in the church and I sit in the chair doesn't mean that I'm a believer. Come on. There's... You know, we talk a lot about the false prophets, but guess what? There's also false Christians. Yes. And they also cause a lot of havoc in the church because they're always in the air. Constant. And and you know the three went in the fire. In Hebrews 12, 29 says, God is an all-consuming fire. And we have to be ready to pass through the fire. That's right. Mm -hmm. And not attribute everything to the devil. That's right. Come on. Come on. Because it's, Come on. as soon as it starts to get a little hot, hey, pray for me. Pray for me. It's getting hot here. The devil's after me. <laughs> but the Bible says, does the Father not chastise the ones he loves? Come on. Come on. There it is. See, if you're not being chastised by God, that means he doesn't love you. That's right. Oh. He's the devil. It's true. And, and see, we stay connected to the vine, which is Jesus, but the Father comes in and he starts trimming us. He starts taking away. He starts He starts trimming us. Why? So we can produce fruit. Amen. God commands fruit. Amen. That's right. Yes. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. <laughs> it was a what? Well, Jim, that was mean. Jesus cursed the fig tree. Why would he kill the tree? Because the tree, he commanded fruit, and and the and and the tree, and, and the, the tree did not produce the fruit. I'll right. cut you off. Yes. Oh, that's mean. It's not about me. That's right. See, we're commanded to to produce fruit in our lives. That's right. Right. We're not. We're not just bumps on the log that come and sit in the chair and do nothing. We're made to move. See, Jesus, the Father built us as tabernacles for his glory. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it starts here. Because the kingdom of heaven does not come through observation, but yet it's within us. Amen. So Jesus didn't just pay the price to get us into the heaven. He paid the price to get heaven into you. He paid the price to get the Holy Spirit in you. And the kingdom of heaven is within. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of life. So when you walk into a dark place, it shifts. The atmosphere shifts. People begin to be healed. Demon, demons begin to manifest. That's right. See, we don't negotiate with demons. We're called to cast them out. Why? Because we've been, we've been given power and authority over them. So we don't sit down and figure out a 10 step exit plan. That's man's wisdom. You know, but let's get them in the back room and 
and let's, let's hide what's going on here. Yeah. We take authority and power. See, he's given us power and authority over every and all unclean spirits and all sickness and disease. And the body of Christ has to stand and take the power and authority and exercise the power and authority on this earth as it is in heaven. That's right. That's right. Because all creation longs for this. The world cries out. Where's the love? All we need is love. And there's going to be a movement upon the earth never seen before. And it's going to happen everywhere. And the world will know them for their great love one for another. Not because I say so, because the Bible says this. See, all this has to happen. And it's going to happen. And, and, and it's a maturity thing. See, when I was young, I had two brothers, and we fought like mad. We, you, you come home. <laughs> you come home, and we'd be out rolling in the yard fighting. Because I grew up with two brothers that were 11 months apart from me. There was a lot of competition. There was a lot of that stuff going on, immaturity that happened. In, in, in that atmosphere. In a lot of ways, the church is like that. There's a lot of uh, ambition. There's a lot of competition. There's all these things happening. Oh, I, you know, I'm a, I prophesied better. I prophesied good. Or, I, you know, I, I saw this healing. I saw this miracle. You know what God says? Get away from me. You work over iniquity. For I never knew you. I just want to know God. See, those things just follow us. We, I've seen as many miracles as anybody this, this walk down this earth, we see him all the time. And, and I am so thankful. And, and I never belittle that or, but that's not what, they're just signs, they point to something. See, there's signs everywhere, but they point to something. And it's him. And when they become to start being me, then I'm responsible to make them happen or create something that might happen. <laughs> Or create an illusion that it did happen. Because my identity is broken. And all of a sudden, I'm moving in the wrong spirit. See, because a lot of times people don't want to be healed. There's something that needs to happen in here. They need to be delivered from some things. They need to know that you love them. And sometimes they just need a hug. And to know that you have no other motive. You don't want their money. You don't want to, you don't want them to do everything that you want. Because that's the ways of the world. They want to see Jesus Christ in you. They want to see the love of God. That's right. Right? It's the fruit. Because if I fail. In anything, I failed in love, right? Because the Bible says love never fails. And so if I've missed it in any way, I've missed it in love. And perfect love casts out all fear. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Well... Mm -hmm. Knowledge of God, who He is, and I, I think a lot of it's caused by the hand searching for the hand of God. God, just move on my life, move on my finances, move on this, move on that. God, move, move, move. That's how the world is. That's how relationships have become, right? <coughs> oh, she's not doing what I want. I'm gonna go find me a new one. <laughs> Wow. Preach. She's getting old now. I'm going to get one that's half the age. That will really make her mad. It ha that's how people think. It's, it's the wickedness. Yes. See, we must learn to exercise. Use discerning between what's good and evil. This is spelled out in the book of Hebrews. It's maturity. Right. Knowing what's good and what's evil. A lot of times we're moving in, in evilness and we don't even know it. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. Come on now. And so there's an immaturity in, um, in that. 
but there's also those that do it on purpose. And that's pure wickedness, and those are the ones that God deals with. Look in the book of Acts. You haven't lied to man, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. And instantly. See, we all want the book of Acts stuff, right? God says you're not ready for that. It's a maturity thing. See, the, the, look at Peter, right? Peter says, I'll go with you, Lord. They're not going to mess with you. We're bros. And Jesus says, for sure, three before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. See, he already knew that Peter wasn't ready. But Peter was ready. That's all we are, right? Yeah, here I am. God says, you're not ready yet. Some things have to happen. I have to take you through some things to get you to where I'm. I want to take you. <laughs> and that's different from the Peter who comes out of the synagogue and walks down and they line up. And there's a shadow of glory upon his life. And they just instantly be healed and delivered and set free because of the glory that's upon his life. But see, he went through a process. And there's pain in the process. But it's Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. And so there's, there's a process that happens with us. And the longer we de delay the process, the more tormented we are. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, just take it, do it quick. Yeah. He was saying something about, what do you want, the, the, uh, the buckshot or the, the slug? I said, give me the slug, make it quick. I don't want to suffer. <laughs> Jesus was perfected through his suffering. But you know, when the woman said, can you put your sons beside Jesus, right? The left and the right, these are my sons. He says, yeah, I can promise you this. They can, I'll give them the cup. They can take the cup, but it's up to my father. See, he's talking about authority. The kingdom of heaven, there's authority, right? And it comes through righteousness. The Bible says that, that righteousness is the staff and the kingdom. His righteousness is not mine. It's the same way with wisdom. You know, I have my wisdom, and then there's the wisdom from heaven. They're quite different. Isaiah 55 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. Moses said this, God, show me your ways. Before he said, God, show me your glory. See, the ways of God. We must seek his way. Because they're different than ours. They look different than the world. He promises us that when you seek, you shall find. And when you knock, he's there. And he'll never leave or forsake you. What happens is we take our eye off the prize. You know, the person that drives down the road and they're looking over here and they're driving over here. They're driving over here because that's where they're looking. That's how we are. That's why Jesus said, Whatever is righteous, whatever is holy, whatever is a good report, keep your mind here. And as we go, we look more like him. We begin to act like him. We begin to think like him. As he says, take captive every thought and submit it to the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. Why? Because it changes our heart. Because he's creating in us a new heart. It's the pure heart. That see God. Amen. That's right. Who shall come? The pure in heart, clean hand. That's right. I put I put on Facebook earlier something about it's the um, what, what do you call that stuff you put on your hands? The sanitizer is okay, but our praise is really the weapon. It's when we praise Him, when we lift Him high. That's, right. That's our weapon, a warfare. Amen. Come on. And then you know a friend put on there. She she said the. Yeah, but the Bible also says, 
come to him with clean hands and a spare heart. <laughs> 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 <That's good. laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you got me. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, are, are you attractive on me though? Yeah. That, that we are in a process. When I was young and a child, I did things as a child, but now that I'm a grown man, I do things as a man, hopefully. I know some that don't. Yeah. That live, you know, a long life and, and doing the same things that they have, and it's called immaturity. I'm speaking to the right group of people here. That's right. Um, because God's going to do something very powerful here. I, I saw it. Mm -hmm. I saw it. You, you guys are, you guys are going to have a revival. You guys are going to feel a revival. And when I was, uh, when I was laying down, and I was praying early, and I saw this. I saw the Lord uh, mm -hmm. come to you, and I saw the Lord. Isaiah 22, 22, the Lord's giving you the key. And there's a mantle that's coming upon your life. And the Lord's giving you the keys. And that's powerful, bro. That's powerful. And I'm really honored to be like in your presence in here. I, I, I mean, like we, we go all over the world. And, and sometimes we can be in front of thousands of people, but I would rather be with people that are sold out. Right. I, and, and you're sold out. And my God, I want to pray for you guys. Can you guys come here and stand? Yeah. I might as well do it now. Yeah. I know I give you some stuff over the, I don't want to up front. Over the phone. I want to pray for you. Oh. You and your wife. Oh, first. Okay. Then I'm going to pray for the others. Okay. Uh, hey, Michael. Hey, Michael, will you catch? Sure. Oh, can you catch? You can catch this for sure. There's two. <laughs> There's an anointing that's going to come upon your life, and God's going to use you to steward a revival. There's also a business mantle upon your life, and, and, and the Lord's going to entrust you with even um, other talents that, that have been hidden from others. And there's going to be a great transference as well. There's going to be a, uh, a person that's going to come to you, and he's going to he's going to give you the keys. And I believe it's going to be for a church. I saw, I was seeing this last night. You told me about a dream you had last night. And I'm like, that's exactly what I was seeing. But the, the Lord's going to give you a, a building, a structure, a, a box. Um, but but that's not what it's about. It's about what you're carrying. And it's the heart of God. And for God's people, it's for his bride. Um, you're called to equip the bride. It's really an apostolic anointing that's upon your life. You are a prophet of God, mm -hmm. and you are a sent one. And, and God has called you together for such a time as this. And, and there's a powerful anointing, a healing anointing on your life, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Because the reason I brought up Lonnie Frisbee earlier is because I saw his mantle coming upon your life. And, and, and Lonnie had a very strong mantle, and he moved in and high revelation of healing and the gifts of the Spirit. And I see this mantle come upon your life. Wow. And I see you as, as being stewards of revival and, and people even family counseling, this kind of thing. Uh, amazing gift. And, and, and <sighs> there's, there's, a, there's a, a fire angel I see coming. Hey. Whoa. And it's being assigned to you and, and today there's 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 a commission. And and from this day forth and Gary Beaton prophesied this over our life and he released this. It's 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 a red carpet. 
and, and what this is, is open doors. It's Isaiah 22, 22. It's open doors. I will open doors that no man can shut, and I will close the doors that no man can open. So, um, the, so things are going to be happening very quickly. And once this happened with us, the doors just started opening up. And, and I believe this is going to happen with you. And God's going to send you to the nations. And stay in. Revival is your portion. He's taking the overflow back there. So, Father, I thank you, God. And Father, everything Lord, that you have for them today, let it be released. Today, I release, Father, everything righteous and holy that you placed upon my life. Let it come upon them, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of power and the spirit of might to come upon them. And Father, I thank you for this anointing, Father. And I thank you for these seers, Father. And I thank you for greater revelation, Lord. I thank you for the dreams. I thank you, Lord, for the visions. And I thank you for the spirit of power to come. started the, 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 the chapel, the Lord's going to use you in a movement. God's using you to birth the movement. I thank you. That's going to reach the earth. It's going to reach every nation and every creed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come here. Yeah, you. Yeah. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this prophet. And, and as I was looking at you earlier, the Lord says, Jeremiah, this is my Jeremiah prophet. And the Lord uses you in miracles. I know that the, <laughs> Derek told me, but it ain't nothing what you're going to see. And, and I saw I saw a weeping prophet. I saw a, a man full of compassion in revival. And the Lord's going to use you in revival. But creative miracles, Acts 19 miracles, that God used, God used Paul so mightily that even prayer cloths, creative, undeniable miracles are your portion. But there's a generation that God's giving you. There's a generation of wonder workers that God's going to use you to father. Even as, and he's going to use the brokenness. And he's given you the tools to reach them. Father, I thank you, Lord, for his life. And I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And I thank you, Lord, that you are grooming him into a prophet. And I thank you, Lord, for the power of the spoken word to come upon his life like never before. In the, the gift of miracles to come upon him like never before. Father, I thank you, Lord, for that anointing in the spirit of great grace. You know, in the book of Acts, they talked about in the book of Acts 4, the spirit of great grace come upon him. There's an angel that's going to be working with you. It's great grace. And he's coming upon you now. And you're going to see miracles. And you're going to see oil flow. Hey. Even from your hands. And you're going to see many manifestations. I thank you, Lord, for this man of God. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And I bless him with a father's blessing. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you, Lord, for this seer. I thank you, Lord, for this hungry one. And I thank you, Lord, for this eagle. And I call forth the watchman to rise now. In the name of Jesus, and today I activate you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the oil. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And I thank you, Lord, for the grace. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this watch. Oh. Oh, the, the Holy Spirit's all over you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this life. I thank you, Lord, for this watchman. And I thank you, Lord, for this humble one, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you've called him as deep calls him to deep. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are showing him even the hidden mysteries, Lord, that they're being revealed and unlocked in his life. And I thank you, Lord. The Lord says, decree a thing and it shall be established. Hallelujah. And the power of the spoken word. Thank you, Lord. Who's the one who had a dream? Darren was telling me about there was a woman who had a dream about tonight. Is she here? She's watching. Oh, she's watching. Praise God. Let the fire of God come upon her. <laughs> Somebody's being healed in the neck. I saw pain. I felt the pain coming down my neck. Whoever that is, be healed now in Jesus' name. And I felt it in, in my right calf. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the business mantle. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. I thank you. My God. You guys are carriers of the fire. It's a joy of God. It's your portion. Do you know why Jesus went to the cross? It was a joy set before him. Do you know that joy is you? And the Lord prays that your joy shall be full and complete. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And I, there's a fresh oil, even that you guys are carrying for such a time as this, for the body of Christ. I thank you. And there's favor in business. Amen. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I see the Lord puffing you up just like a balloon with the gifts of the Spirit. Father, I thank you, Lord, to release those into your life now. Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Can I pray for you guys? There, there, you and your wife. So I was seeing some stuff. I want to release that. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this fire ministry. I thank you, Lord, for these revivalists. I thank you, Lord, that they've laid down their lives for you and for the call. And Father, I, I see the tears, and I thank you, Lord, that you've collected all them tears, and you are paying them back with gold and joy. And I thank you, Lord, that joy is their portion. And in this season, the Lord is activating you into a higher realm. And, and, and the Lord's going to place you in places you never even dreamed you thought of being. And there's a grace of God that's going to come upon your life in a favor. And, and even, and I saw this, this, even as Gary Beaton prayed this over us, the red carpet thing. I release that to you. I release these open doors to you upon your ministry. And I really bless what you guys are doing. And I thank you, Lord, for your healing. Lord, I thank you for your healing virtue and that fire to come upon them now. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God of miracles. And I thank you, Lord, for these faithful ones that they've stood and they went to the fire for you. And they've laid down their lives for you. And they've given everything. And, and today I honor them, Lord. And I'm a witness to their ministry and to their lives and all that they've given for you. And I thank you, Lord, that you will pour out a blessing upon them that cannot be contained. And revival is your portion. 
miracles, signs, and wonders. You guys will see clouds of glory. The cloud is going to follow you. The presence of God is going to follow you in the form of a cloud. Gold dust, these kind of manifestations are going to be happening quite often. And they're going to hate you. <laughs> Father, I thank you now. I release now everything, Lord, that you placed upon me. And, and whatever they don't have, Father, that I have, I give it to them now. It's freely I receive, Father. Freely I give. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for healing. Miracle signs, wonders, Father. I thank you for the nations of the earth, Father. I thank you for the stadiums. I thank you for the fields. And I thank you for the glory come upon you. And your power. May the spirit of power come upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire. Oh. 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 the gifts, Father, in a greater measure, the secrets of men's hearts be revealed. And I thank you for the gift of discernment in the name of Jesus. I keep seeing you in Hawaii. I keep seeing you in the <laughs> islands. I saw you in the Bahamas. I saw you in Hawaii. The Lord's, your prophetic psalmist, and, and there's a grace upon your life, a great grace. And, and it, it opens opens doors that that a lot of people can't get through. And there's a prophetic worship upon you. This is a house of of prophets, by the way. Yes. It is an apostolic house, an equipping and anointing house. But it's prophets. It's prophetic. I saw prophetic worship. I saw prophetic painting. I saw prophetic in the business. There's a, there's a whole diverse thing, but it's but it's based in the prophetic. It's 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 based in the spirit. Yeah. And there's a prophetic anointing upon your ministry. Yes. And the Lord's going to take you places. Even in the islands, he's given you favor. Shake it. Shake it. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Yes. Hey. More. Thank you, Lord, for the seed. <laughs> <laughs> Evangelist. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This is my friend. <laughs> I love this guy. I've known him for a couple of years on the internet, but I never really knew him until I meet him. In, in the same way with these guys. You know, our God is a God of relationship. Amen. And I pray that you know the breath, the wind, the God. Understand him, who he is. Because that's what he wants. Did, didn't he not say to us, it's not good that man should be alone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a there's a financial there's there's a finance lift your hands right now. Father, I just thank you to release the finances now. Release them now. Even within the next 15 days, supernatural money is going to come. Houses you didn't buy. Come on. It's a promise of God. I will give you a house that you did not buy. Release it, Lord. Release it now. I call it forth. Angels that gather, bring it forth now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Uh, we were talking earlier with, with Darren. <laughs> I'm looking down and his pants are starting to turn to gold. <laughs> See, God has a plan. Amen. And he has a plan for even many that are in this room right now. Amen. And there's a reason that we have such a small group. It's for a divine purpose. <laughs> happened to me in 2014 I was at a Randy Clark meeting I didn't know Randy Clark I didn't know the guy I knew I heard of a guy named Bill Johnson I live for the world and everybody talked about this Bill Johnson guy so I went I wanted to see this Bill Johnson I want this guy to lay hands on me pray a prayer I would receive his anointing and so I went there and this guy named Randy Clark starts speaking and as he's speaking I began to burn and I mean burn, and my hands begin to burn and tingle and shake. Yes. I never felt anything like that in my life. I never, what they call, fell out in the spirit. I never knew anything like that. But here I am. This man's just talking, and something begins to happen. And he said, like, come to the front. That's right. I came to the front, I go to the floor, and I was glued to the floor for a few minutes. <laughs> And I was curled up, and there was like a lightning bolt that hit me inside of me. No man touched me. Nobody touched me. But somebody touched me. <laughs> Something happened. I didn't understand it. But he didn't ask me to understand it. See, God desires obedience even over sacrifice. Amen. And so I wanted this great man of God to touch me. And I come to this meeting and he starts speaking and, and the power and fire of God become on me. And I fell to the floor. And I went home and I read my Bible and it was like somebody put this big heavy blanket on me. And I was glued to my bed. And I read the book of Isaiah and man, it was speaking to me. That book was reading me. I wasn't reading that book. That book was reading me. And I began to know and understand what those things meant. And I began to live these things out in my life that happened way back then. See, something happened. And God unlocked me. And I received an impartation. So nobody can tell me that's not real. Because... I was talking to a boy whose eyes were blind, and he said, hey, what's going on? 
I said, I don't know. Tell me. He said, I can see. Amen. We weren't praying for blind eyes. I was just talking to him about God. Right. And God healed him. See, we got to even quit putting God in the box about how he heals because oh, Jesus yeah, never did yeah. it the same way. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he causes you to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And this is one of those times. Amen. He caused me, even though I was looking that way. He says, I want that one. I want that one. And so tonight as we pray, I'm going to pray that God activates you. Mm-hmm. And that God touches you and that God wrecks you. In such a way that you're never the same and that you're carrying the fire. When we left Africa two years ago, 26 churches were started. A witch doctor who killed 96 children, blood sacrifice. Mm. God touched him in his house. The fire of God came in inside, knocked him to the floor. He came to the crusade. The fire of God hit him again. He tried to kill us. He woke up the next day in the hospital. That's right. Because he tried to kill us. I made a prayer. I said, God, everything that they're trying to put on us, let it come back. Let them unto repentance. Bring them to your kingdom, your salvation, and make them an evangelist. Come on, yeah. And that's what God did. See, there was no counseling with this guy. Right? There was no middle ground. That's man's way. Hey, let's make let's find some common ground here. And God says it's either my way or the highway. Because Jesus is king. But see, I could have never done that on my own. I needed to hear from him. I needed to see him. I needed to know him. And that's what the call is right now. The fire of God, I pray, is going to come upon your life. And the anointing is going to come upon your life. The anointing to hear. The anointing to see. The anointing to cast out your demons. That's what happened to me. It didn't happen any other way, not by power or might, but through his spirit. And that's what I'm praying tonight, the anointing, crystal, the smearing. I pray that it's going to come upon your life. I pray that the fire is going to come upon your life. And that this place starts a revival that cannot and will not be contained. Because we need revival. We need the refreshing. We need the empowerment. And we need places of his glory that people can come and be healed a safe zone from the world that's what separates us see our God is resurrected he's alive he's not dead and he's here tonight so father in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord for everything that you've placed upon me I thank you Lord for the anointing and I thank you for the grace and I thank you Lord to release that grace among your people tonight I thank you, Lord, just the way you touched me. I thank you to release that gift upon their lives, to release that anointing, Lord, that they would never be the same. I thank you, Lord, that they will be carriers of revival, Father. I thank you to be carriers of your anointing and carriers of your power, Lord. Father, I ask you to release your power in this place tonight. As you showed me, you were going to release the keys to the kingdom and the spirit of power upon their lives, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, to come. Come, Lord. Come on. Let them never be the same, Father. Release the anointing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, for this hungry one. Fill them. Hungry ones, for they shall be filled. Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. 
Release it, Lord. Release it. Release it. You guys are going to burn all the way up and down the coast. I see the train of revival, the glory train. You guys are, you guys are carrying revival. You're going to carry the cloud with you. You're going to carry the grace of God and the heart of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you will call even the broken and the lost into alignment, Lord, and reveal destinies and unlock them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this favor to come upon their lives. And I thank you, Lord, for the finance, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the home. I thank you, Lord, for the cars. I thank you, Lord, for the gold. Let it come forth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let them never be the same. Let them never be the same. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's power all over you. See, the Bible says that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive power. And it's my prayer that you are never the same. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for this watchman. I thank you, Lord, for the grace. I thank you, Lord, for the prophetic. Let it rise. Let the oil come forth in Jesus' name. Many of you will have dreams tonight, encounters with God. Destinies are being unlocked and revealed. Prophetic dreams. I thank you, Lord. The Lord's going to turn your world upside down, sir. I don't know who you are, but the Lord's got his hand all over you. Father, release the gifts. There's nine spiritual gifts. Let them be released. You know, when I received impartation, it hurt. It hurt a lot. You know what I said? I said, more. I said, no, Lord, I want more. I want it all. I said, kill me, Lord. I want it all. I want everything that you got for me. Give me it, Lord. I can take it. Lord, if you kill me, bring me back. The power of resurrection lies within the believer. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, from the dead, lives in you. You believe that? Pray for the dead. You're going to see the dead rise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As deep calls on to deep, I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of revelation and wisdom to be released. To be released. Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for that hunger to raise the dead. And just as you have raised them, Lord, from the dead, give them the testimonies, Lord. Give him the testimonies, Lord. Put it on video. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Within the next 15 days, there's going to be money released.
in Africa, the Spirit of God would go into people's houses and it would draw them from their houses and they would be convicted to come to the crusade. And they would come and you know what would happen? They'd be healed. They would be delivered. Something would happen. See, that's real revival. The witch doctor was knocked down in his house by the fire of God as he was trying to pray against him. See, this is the kind of power that we need in the yeah. church. And it's for you. It's for me. It's for the sons and daughters of God. It's your portion. See, because the gospel without power is not a good news. We might just well study psychology. It's like trying to counsel out a demon. You know, they're, they're very smart. Demons are smart. They're really dumb, but they're really smart. <laughs> But you know what? They lose. Not just one time, every time. Because greater is he who is in you than he who lives in the world. And it's time for the ecclesia to rise. So I call you higher tonight. And wherever you are, don't stay there. Do something. Do something with the anointing. Do something with what God's given you because he's faithful to give you more. Because as you walk, he blesses each step. And you, be, you have power and authority over each place that you go because you are the light. Yes. It's called that he said, upon the hill that the world looks at you and says, look at that one. Look at that one. And you walk into the room where there's all demonic and there's, there's unclean spirits and there's witchcraft. Guess what? They begin to shriek because they can't stand to see the light that's within you. And every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because if Jesus Christ be lifted high, he will draw all men unto himself. And this is the book of John 3.15. When we let him be lifted high. Not when we start exalting churches and ministries and peoples. And, but when Jesus Christ be lifted high, he will draw all men to himself. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Rodney Howard Brown looked at me. I remember Randy Clark talking about testimony. He said, it was five times Rodney prayed for me. None of it worked till the fifth time. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, Chris and I went to a meeting of Rodney Howard Brown. We're sitting on the front row, and I'm like, I want it, I want it. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Yeah. See, we got to get hungry, right? Yeah. And I'm hungry, you know, I'm praying, I'm praying in tongues, I'm there, and I'm making myself available. I want this, I want this. Every time he prayed for me, nothing would happen. One, twice. He kept praying for me. I kept, God, let him pray for me. But you know, on the fifth time, Who's sitting over here and he looks at me and he locks his eyes on me and all of a sudden I'm stuck to my chair. <laughs> Bring him here! And I go to get up and I can't move. And so the ushers go to grab me and I can't move my legs. I'm sitting in the chair position. They're carrying me. It's all on video. Chris was there. And I could not move. See, something happened. There, there, there's something, what I'm saying is there's something to this. There's something tangible that's going to change your life. Hallelujah. Thank you. And it was embarrassing. I couldn't move. And I'm stuck in a chair position and these two big guys are carrying me along. And the power of God is so strong on me. And I'm, and I'm on the floor and I'm glued to the floor. But something happened. Can I tell you everything that happened? No, I don't know. I just know that it hurt. <laughs> he looks at me and says, you're never going to be the same. <laughs> and that's all he said. He didn't say go buy my book. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're never going to be the same. I'm like, that's all you got for me? That's all you got for me? See, God does that to us. See, because 
we know the mysteries, you know. The Bible says this, right? It says, it's the pleasure of God to hide a matter. But it's the pleasure of a king to seek out a matter. Because that's how he's made us. He's made us to be kings and priests. But see, we must search out the mysteries, right? We must search them out. Because there's there's an adventure. We all love adventure, right? Amen. And there's an adventure in seeking and finding and being blessed. That's how he's made us. To seek him, to find him. Knock and it shall be answered. Seek and you shall find. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness. See, when we start seeking his righteousness, we find it. But you know that the mystery is Righteousness is the staff in the kingdom. What is the staff? It's power, right? We learned this when we went to Africa. We got to be herdsmen. He says, you guys are going to officially be herdsmen. And they give us two things. They give us a pair of boots, and they give us a staff. And the guy, I said, what's your name? He goes, my name is John. And I said, John was in the Bible, right? He goes, yeah, so was Thomas. <laughs> That's my name. Some of you know the Bible. And, and I said, what's this staff for? And he says, this, this means that we have power and authority over the cattle. And they understand when you hold this staff that you're in charge. Is anybody catching this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, as we seek the kingdom, many seek the kingdom. Jesus said, you can't see the kingdom unless you're reborn. But he, did, he doesn't say in there, you enter the kingdom. He says, you can't see it unless you're reborn. Mm -hmm. He says, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. They're together. They're not separate. They are the same. One and the same. Yes. And many try to teach that, oh, you get that everything's, everything is just given to you when you accept Jesus. That's not true at all. Mm. Because the crown goes to those that will come. I'm an overcomer. How about you, sir? Yes. Yes. Come on. As you begin to seek these things, God reveals them. He reveals them in the nighttime. Yes. The first thing I do when I wake up, hello. Hello. What are we doing today? That's right. I love you. Thank you for this day. When I go to bed, see, Paul said this, Christ is my life. And as the bride of Christ, that's the life of Christ. See, because he's waiting for us to arise and take our authority and take our positions as the bride. And he's not coming for a broken bride. She's not ready. He's coming for a perfect response. Perfect and so the more we let him take this stuff out, the more we begin to look like him. Yes. Right? And the biggest thing is love doesn't, love doesn't seek its own. Right? As we learn to seek him, we already know and experience what love is because God is love. But it's only when we begin to give it away that it becomes ours. And nobody can touch you because nobody gave it to you. The enemy can't take it. And the enemy has no more power over you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let's give Jesus a hand. <laughs> I think Chris says, do we, are we still okay, bro? You're good. <laughs> I, I thought she was going to pray in Spanish, in the beautiful Portuguese. She's going to pray in Portuguese. <laughs> yes. Where's the song? This is Thomas's wife, by the way. Chris. Yes. Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome. Thank you, this blessed couple that are hosting us. Um, we feel, actually, when we came back to the hotel, I was asking the Lord, Lord, give me a what do you, what's the word? What do you have for them? And the Lord gave me Ephesians 3.15, Mark 3.15, wow. to start with. And he says, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. And you guys are family for us. 
Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 So in 2017, I saw a vision of a red blanket. We were in a meeting in Buffalo, and that red blanket cover, cover the city. I, I even had a picture in my on my iPad because you could see that red blanket, and I was like, Lord, what is this? What is this? And he says, well, this is the mantle of, of my love, but not exactly my love, how people say. It's I'm raising and I'm covering those that truly loves me. Mm -hmm. To be, as Thomas mentioned, it's, he did, it, did you see this before? So that was just confirmation. The Lord says, crazy people, people in love do crazy stuff. Yeah. That's right, amen. And this, bl this blanket is the people that I am raising that are crazy for me, they do crazy stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord bring that to my mind because I was asking the Lord, what do you have for this house? What do you have for those people? And he, and he says, those people are the ones that are, that are gonna do crazy things for me. They already yeah. do. Yeah. And they're gonna be known for that. Mm -hmm. yes. um, you guys are exactly, so, you, so, you are where you exactly supposed to be Come on. Man. Well. for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, let it flow. There was um, it flow. Thomas Nation as well. Um, I saw access to people, places, and things, Isaiah 45, 3. The hidden, the, tre the hidden treasure, the mm -hmm. hidden mana, and God is unlocking tonight for everybody that is here and even watching the video, access to people, access to places, and access to things that you by yourself wouldn't be able to have. Oh, that's right. And you are going to know that it's His. That's right. His power. Um, Thomas mentioned as well, uh, you guys are part of the Deuteronomian 8.18 I am the Lord who gives you power to create wealth. Wow. Yes. That was the, Lord, the word of the Lord for this ministry. Whoa. And actually he mentioned as well separation of those who aren't completely sold out for Jesus. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. mm -hmm. Right? So that's why we are the Lord, the Lord allowed us to be in a small group today. Yes. Um, I saw there was a season in Brazil. I saw revival here as well. There was a season in Brazil that we would go to the mountains to pray every Friday night. The teenagers with the old, the blue hair ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happened there? This is start by yeah, Friday. Listen. We would start to pray, and after 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we would look around the leaves on the floor, on the ground, the leaves in the tree, the rocks. They were glowing like yellow fluorescent. Do you remember those stickers that you seen? Everything was like that. And we would take those leaves, take to our home, and show. I would show my parents, and then my mom would Oh, I want to see that. I said, well, let's go with us. So every Friday, people that heard about that start to go to see. Then when you start to pray, those people from the world would come in the middle of the, the mountain and they would manifest and run away. And we would keep there praying, <laughs> praying, 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 praying. And then the Lord would deliver them and they would bring, and they would come back. Yeah. <laughs> nice. and, it, and everybody that would come there would take the leaves and show, long story short, wow. this was just in the beginning on Friday. And end up that for a year, we didn't know we were in a revival, but we would from Monday to Monday. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sunday after the service, everybody would go to the mount. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, another group, and this was not the same place. There was all over different group of people and everybody 
would start to pray together and the leaves would glow and they, mm -hmm. the rocks would glow and you would think wow. and show to the people in the world and the Lord bring me there today to my mind because I don't know what sign is going to come but this that's going to come here there's many people from far away, from all of, from, from, from all different countries and they are, are going to come to this place oh, to see. They will be known. You, you guys will be known for those. I don't know what sign the Lord is going to give, but this is a sign that will confirm and testify this ministry. Um, there is as well, the Lord is pouring out tonight the gift of faith for specific breakthrough. Amen. Amen. And this comes, I'm going to give you just a key. This comes to the obedience. When, the Lord, when you just stand in what the Lord is telling you, this gift of faith comes and takes over and breakthrough. I'm going to give you a, a recent, the last example that we live in was in Africa. We went to visit orphanages, and the last time we were there, everything was running all right, but the pastor there never, never asked us anything, never told us anything, and when we get there, we go visit again, right? And then we see that the kids were having one meal per day because the sponsor passed away, and his family didn't want to keep support, so they lost them. And a couple different two days we went for different places, and the Lord was just like I I was in compassion and I couldn't sleep and I couldn't I couldn't uh, everywhere I look I would see those children faces and, and the Holy Spirit was confronting me like well you are gonna come you are gonna just pray and you were gonna you see this and you were not gonna do anything they said lord but we we came here short even short of money what can i do holy spirit you gotta tell me i i, I want to bless those kids but i don't know i'm just sharing this to to share with you about the gift of faith okay so i didn't plan on that but the next morning when i when i woke up I just went through Facebook, I, the Holy Spirit completely took over. That wasn't me. I didn't make plans, but when I found myself, I was doing a live asking Brazil to sow because I want to give an offer in the name of Brazil before we leave. Amen. And the Lord, I said, well, Lord, I did everything I could. <laughs> now it's on you, right? <laughs> I believe you and, and my sister and, and me, we, we were just asking like, the Lord to touch hearts and to move the hearts. And the, in Brazil now, because this virus and everything, the currency is five to one dollar, right? But long story short, overnight came $2,500. Wow. Amen. But this was the gift of faith. I didn't have, and then I was like, okay, well, I gotta have money to help those kids. And then the Lord, by the end, the Lord said, no, you don't need to have that. You need to have faith because it was through the gift of faith that the money came. Amen. Amen. So this is the gift of faith that the Lord's unlocking tonight over each one of you, even the ones that are watching. And you are gonna start. The Lord just wanna you you stand. The Bible say everything you when you do it when you did everything that you could do, just stand. That's right. right. So when you stand, when you did everything, you were gonna see His faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, if there is someone with depression and panic attacks, I would like to pray for you by the end. But mainly is this the, what the Lord showed me, yeah. and I, I didn't share with you. But mainly was. Tell me about your testimony. What happened with anxiety and depression? Right. Well, I I had. Well, I before some stuff that I passed through on my early twenties, I was for 
13 years on prescribed drugs to sleep and uh, depressive medicine, uh, medicines for depression. Um, there was a point that I would take, I don't know the name here in America, I guess it's Clonapan, Clonapan, Clonapan. Yep. Uh, I came to take, uh, that w by the end I was having like 35 drops of Clonapan every night and wow. I couldn't sleep. And then because I couldn't sleep and I couldn't take more, otherwise I was going to overdose, I start to panic. Because <laughs> I, I, I would be days and days having those medicines and I couldn't sleep, nights and nights. And then that would take me to the hospital. The last one that I had, that were that panic at that crisis that I had, that was my heartbeats were 191 late. And I remember the doctor came and said, well, we're gonna play, we're gonna give Aldo for her, which is a, psychi a very strong psychiatric medicine. And the nurse came with the, the medicine intravein. And they, when, when, when this nurse came to give me, the other one that was holding the tray said to me, can I pray for you? And I remember doing this and I pass out because the medicines are, this medicine specific is like 10 seconds. And I woke up delivery. Yeah. Um, yeah. This nurse is, every time we go to Brazil, she comes, we, we go to see her, she comes to see me. But this, uh, this is another thing that I saw over Jen it's being recorded, right? Yes. So the same way in the natural that she has kids, she's gonna have many spiritual kids, yeah. which she's gonna grow then for the marketplace. Amen. And that just came to me because this nurse, you see, this nurse is a believer in the marketplace. Uh, yeah. That is delivering people in the hospital. After that night, after that prayer, I was delivered of panic attacks, and after six months, I didn't have any drop of clonapan to sleep anymore. Wow. No, that's just the power of God. Wow. And this house, and, and this house, and Jen are gonna are gonna raise many, many people for marketplace. Amen. Amen. There is a transference of wealth happening from the wicked to the righteous. So receive this. We've been, those, in 15 days, you guys are going to have testimonies of, of amounts that you don't expect. And that's a confirmation because when you receive this money, you've got to remember it's not for you. It's for the kingdom of God. Every time you have a, this is another key, every time you have a purpose, which is a God purpose, and you want a that, sor that resource for that, for God's kingdom, He gives you to, to complete. Amen. So it's not about you. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray for you all now. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for each life here, for each life that is watching. I thank you, Father, for those people that are sold out for you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the mantle of love. I thank you for the gift of faith. And I thank you, Father, for the testimony of your glory. I thank you, Father, for after this night, their lives are not going to be the same. And I thank you, Father, for the new that you are doing. I thank you, Father, for the keys that you are giving in each one's hand. And everything that is holy and righteous that you place over my life, I freely release for them now, Father. 
I thank you for prophetic dreams. I thank you for visions, open visions. I thank you, Lord, even for encounters face to face with Jesus. I thank you, Father, for encounters face to face with Jesus in the flesh. Everything is possible for those who believe, Father. So let it be manifest. Let your will be done. And let it be done according to your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. I want to say something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we was in Africa. And this all happened. We were praying for a thousand kids. And they were tormented. And a lot of them were tormented. Mm. There was heavy witchcraft and all this stuff going on. But many gave testimony that they were delivered because... These witches would call them in the spirit and they put curses on them to mm -hmm. tell them. They would hear voices to say, go outside of the camp into the woods because they would kill the kids. They blood sacrifice. They would receive power in this kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, but something came over Chris and she, she raised that money overnight. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is never going to happen. And I realized even within myself, that I, didn't, I wasn't acting in faith. And, and I say this to tell you that these are the places that God calls us to check. Because he says, look within your own heart to see if you're acting in faith. And, and I was taught a lesson through her testimony and how that money came. Because there was no way possible. We had already spent everything we had. You know what I mean? It was it was really trying for us. You know, we, we, I forgot to tell that even the money for the kids came. I don't know. And so we, you know, we even went into our credit cards and stuff because we were just, once you're there and you see that, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you see it, you don't do anything, but there's something yeah. seriously wrong with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're doing everything we can. And I'm like, there's just no way we don't, we can't get that money. And she she starts crying out to God. And, and, and the gift of faith comes upon her life. And, and the next day, there was like, there was like 500 and I'm like, oh, there's only 500. It's, it's you know, for a thousand kids, that's not a lot of money. Yeah. Right. And, and and like, she goes, you watch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like nine o'clock at night. She goes, you watch what happens by the morning. <laughs> and you wake up in the morning and just ding, ding. see a cloud. And there was like $2,500, which was nine million shillings. You got me shillings. Oh, and, okay. and it was. It was the amount that we needed to feed those kids for a month because we we have decided that we need to feed these kids for a month. Come on. Um, and so that's the amount that came in. And then we, uh, a pastor in a, one of the churches that we minister in says, how much do you need to build that kitchen? And he says, here's, here's 5,000 for the food. And, and he says, I'm going to build that kitchen. Wow. And even in, in my doubt and unbelief, that God used her to show me. And that's why we need each other. Because when we hear these testimonies and we see these things, it inspires us to do these things. Amen. And, and sometimes we like to think, well, I've already got it made, or I'm, you know. But God really humbles us in different ways. And, and there was a woman who was praying for us in her dream, and Jesus said, to Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Feed my lambs. Amen. Do you love me? Yeah, feed my sheep. Amen. The babies, the sheep. Feed my sheep. And this was one of the intercessors that was praying for us. See, God, has sent, God sent us there to supply for these kids. Amen. Amen. And even when I couldn't stand in faith, she did. And so we didn't have the money like she said, but we have faith. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all we have. And Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith now is, it's here. It's not for tomorrow, it's not for yesterday. It's now, it can only be here and now. And if we're not standing and walking in faith, and even by being here today, you know, with all this spirit of fear going around the world, can we stand in faith? Because we, we believe in miracles, we believe in signs, and we believe in wonders. And if, if we're not standing in unity and strong and saying, devil, you bow, sickness, you bow, that's right. 
And you stay out of my camp. I have the blood of Jesus over my life. That's right. We have to be strong in our faith. Jesus said, when I come back, am I going to find faith? Am I going to find a people of faith that really believe? Yes. And so that's really what I wanted to, to, to say. Um, even through my own doubts, I was taught a lesson through it. And, and because those kids needed fed. Amen. And we didn't have the money. <laughs> but God knew where it was. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we're, we're looking one way and God's saying, I want you to look over here. I Amen. want you to follow me, son. I want you to listen to me, daughter, because I know where everything is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus. Pastor. Yeah. And so if, if you have any uh, a spirit of fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. please have Chris pray for you. Yeah. Yes. Bob. Slept on the carpet. <laughs> uh, the Lord is like working on you. Hasn't happened in a while. Wow. A lot of us got touched tonight. Man. A lot of us might be thinking, man, is this uh, what just happened? So what I really want to do is the Lord put it on my heart that all the pastors here will come forth, please. I want all the pastors, the pastor churches to come up here. If you guys consider yourself a pastor or you want to be a pastor, please come up here. Uh, me and Thomas and his wife are going to lay hands on you and my wife. And um, this is a season right now where we need these pastors strong. Amen. And uh, it's, guys, you you know, he calls me pastor, but I ran from that for a long time. Okay? If you read your Bible, you know that the seriousness, like what the Lord was accepting me into, it's terrifying me a little bit, you know? So I want to, everyone just, just raise your hands up towards these guys right now. And I just want to pray for them, Lord. Father God, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just... Empower them, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would just give them so much strength, Father God, right now, to not give up. Yes. That, that the enemy is lying to you when he says, this isn't going to grow. Yes, this yes. isn't going to get better. That's, the enemy is going to try to mess up the place you have fellowship. Yes. He's going to try to mess up the people. Yes. There's going to be all kinds of like gossip that's going to come. We just need to be prepared for this, Father God. Prepare us for the battle. For you prepared these warriors, Lord, and they're not going to give up. They're not going to bow. They're not going to compromise. They're going to continue to fight like King David fought. And then he's going to fast, and they're going to pray, and they're going to pray through it, and they're going to have patience. And sometimes being a shepherd, Father God, we need people around us to help us. So, Lord, we pray that you would just equip helpers for them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some people need this and yes, that, and I can't do it, but my wife can. So, Lord, bring helpers around them, Father God. Bring resources, Father God. Lord, it's just so wonderful when you walk into a place and there's people there to help. And, Lord, there's people out there that have a burning desire that want to help. And, Lord, with the way churches are looking today, there's going to be empty buildings from what I saw. But those buildings won't be empty for long. But those people need a place to go. Yes. And they need a place to be fed. Yes. And they need guys and women out there that are going to fight for kingdom to come forth. Regardless of the cost. Yes. So Lord, I just pray for this mighty man right here for his heart, Lord. That you would rejuvenate everything that's been stolen from him, Lord. Any word curse that's been spoken against him. Witchcraft, you have no right around this man. We pray a supernatural hedge of protection around him and his entire ministry. He is a shepherd to his flock. Father God, he has a high calling, Lord. I just, I don't know, I just I just feel like I, I just want to call him the whosoever. But he is the one that will carry that mantle. He is been set free for this purpose. To set sacrament free, Lord. And the territory that he's around, Father God, that he would be surrounded by lovers. The people that would just want to just yes. serve, Father yes. God, and help, Lord, that it wouldn't come at a cost, Lord, yes. that they would do it together. Yes. Lord, it's such, a, it's such a pleasure to have him here in our presence, Father God. Fill him with your glory. Fill him with your power. Lord, give him the sermons from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Lord, Father God, that power would come. Lord, that it would be such a powerful revelation, Father God, that things would build. 
you're in the you're in the process of a building right now. And for these two ministers right here, Father God, I pray for this man's heart, Lord. Father God, this is this is just you moved him a place to place to place to place, but now he's planted. And Father God, his roots are going to go deep. We love this man. I I just met him, but in the spirit a long time ago, many months ago. I knew that we would meet one day. Amen. With so much resistance trying to stop us from meeting one another, I knew there was a purpose. When meetings just come like that, zap, I get worried. But when people just say, hey, you need to meet, and then all of a sudden I feel warfare in the spirit, I know there's something coming powerfully. So, Lord, we pray for him and his wife. We pray for their ministry, their children, Father God. Lord, the nations, Lord. Revival come, Father God. Lord, we forgive our enemies, Lord, Father God. Bring ministers and spiritual fathers around my brother, Father God, and his wife. It would just pour into them the Father's heart, the Father's love. Lord, that it would just come, Father God, and permeate everything that's in them and around them. Lord, we ask for favor with landlords and finance and vehicles and food and, and just all the things that need for a household, Father God. Lord, we pray right now that if anyone has said anything to this man that was hurtful or painful or something that wasn't true, Lord, we ask to forgive them and we just cast that away, Lord, as a lie from the enemy, not to hurt or hinder our brother or sister, but we lift them up, Father God, for what they're doing. And Lord, we thank you for them taking the blood of it, Lord, the tip of the spear, Father God. The People don't understand when you're the tip of the spear, you're going into a place no one's been before. There's no road back. There's not some guy saying, oh yeah, turn left, turn right, oh, don't worry about it, there's the water over there. These guys walk into the places that most people won't. So Father God, we ask right now, angels before them, surround them, Father God, with your glory, Father God, as they walk in your glory and goodness, Father God. We just pray for these ministers. We pray for the people that are evangelizing, the ones that are called to be ministers and pastors. Father God, we just say, raise them up, Lord. Raise them up, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. You a pastor? You're an associate pastor? Come up here. An associate pastor is a pastor. What was your name again? Neil. Neil, that's right. All right, so Jim, come over here. So we're going to pray for Neil. Put your hand on his heart. So, Father God, we thank you for Neil, Lord. We thank you for a servant's heart, Father God. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, Call to me and I'll answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you have not known. And I see that verse above you. I see you calling out to God a lot and asking you for things. And he's explaining things to you. So, Lord, who is Neil to you? An obedient son. When he calls my name, seeks after my heart doesn't turn the blind eye to things, loves righteousness, seen a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, you've walked through it all, the Lord says he's putting you through advanced obstacle courses, <laughs> the Lord is saying the glory shall come to you, glory to glory. He says every cry of the night he's heard. Every moment in your car, yelling, praying, wondering, he's heard you. You're praying for your family, he's hearing your prayers. He says you pray for your friends, the people of the past. He's working it out. Iron sharpens iron. He says your smile lights up the room. And there's a small group. You're praying with men and women. Yeah, he says you're like honey to his lips. I smell a really good fragrance of joy. The overflow anointing onto my brother, Father God. And when he lays hands on people, that the anointing would flow to them and to others. The Lord calls you a disciple maker. You are a disciple maker. You are a disciple maker. Strengthen his body, Lord. The whole world will 
Rosa, Father, thank you. I don't know how one hand held up 300 pounds, but it did. <laughs> Holy ghost. Spirit of might. Yeah. I was at this tent meeting in Santa Maria, and this guy, Glenn Smith, took his Bible, hit this kid, boom, and he went fine. Boom! And Glenn said the same thing. That guy will never be the same. <laughs> Turned off all the lights. Want some prayer? Oh, come on. I love words. I see a violence in you. Yes. Now you're the kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent sees it by force. The Lord says, I want you to press into the kingdom. Yes. I want to manifest the kingdom and I want to bring kingdom men and women in this place. Yes. So I just declare a new clarity over you, yes. a new vision, a new sight, yes. and you're going to know who the kingdom people are. Yes. Very important. Because I see you're still pressing through some religion, a lot of different things. Yes. But the Lord is pulling you through. Yes. He's pulling you through. It's like the, like what Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man into heaven. Yes. The Lord's pulling you through. He's pulling you through that eye hole. He's yes. pulling you through that eye of a needle. Yes. He's literally yes. God. So that you can possess everything that he has for you yes. in the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I just declare the kingdom authority. And the kingdom power over you. In the next six months, you'll see more of that breakthrough manifested. Yes. As you press in with that violence. In the name of Jesus. There's something, there's something super interesting about what he just said. Because how long have I struggled with that for? With clarity. Remember I said, no, yeah. the, vi the, the money to take force. Like I keep telling my wife, why do I feel like I need to be in battle? When am I going to be used? When am I going to fight? When am I going to really get a chance to fight? And my wife is like, I don't know. And I'm like, you're so right. I don't know. I think it's loud, but I want to fight. I want to like hear like shields, like go, 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 go. I want to be like soldiers. You ready? They're like, we're ready. I'm like, perfect. Rage is good. Like the movie Gladiator. Rage is good. You know, that's what I want to be for God's kingdom. I keep having these dreams about how we go to battle. And how love wins. I mean, this wind of God is coming. And the whole enemy surrenders. They fall to their knees. You know what they say? We were terrified from the beginning. But we put a fake presence up because we were told we were going to be put to death if we didn't fight the kingdom of God. But they already knew what the result was going to be. And they knew that they were going to surrender. Yes. I had a meeting in my house and I was praying out of the book of Genesis. And this is when we had the apartment meetings. And those were so powerful. Talk about being stuck to a chair. I got stuck to the ground. And these five grown men were trying to pull me off the ground. I'm like, I'm going to rip my arm off. They said that there was a big I saw an angel standing on my chest holding me down. And it hurt. It hurt. That was serious pain. But I remember I was, I went into an open vision in the book of Genesis and all of a sudden I was standing in a, this, this, this pink cloud. It looked like cotton candy and it was an altar. And I was standing at this altar and I looked over to the right and there was this green, there was this like greenish pink glass that these angels were all standing on and they had these flags and they were kicking their feet like this. And there was these angels that were coming and they were flying in and they were flying around. And I said to myself, there's so much love. It was, there was so much love. And the Lord said, that's how I'm going to win, is with my love. So I turned around, and I looked in the room, and I waved my hand. And of course, the guy playing the guitar, he smashed his guitar. And I fell down on the ground, and I, kept, I just kept crying. And I just kept saying, love, 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 love. And, and so, so that word that you gave me is right. And I appreciate that. Thank you for being bold and speaking. That's what we need in this house. We need people to stand up and speak. Because I preach all the time that there's somebody sitting in the in the congregation with a burning desire to want to share. You want to share? Oh, you want Germany testimonies? I want to hear it. This is what we love. 
You guys have a burning desire, something inside of you that's coming out that you want to preach. We want to hear it. This is Michael. He's one of my lovely friends. We love this guy. Thank you. It's funny that actually you gave the word to him about stadiums uh, at the very beginning of the term because he released me a couple weeks ago to go to a school evangelism with Ben Fitzgerald about stadium crusade training. <laughs> setting up stadiums in all over the world. And I have a burden and passion for that. So I wanted to go and God gave me a dream last fall to go to it. So I went to it in Germany and I was also 15 minutes from my old high school. So just to be able to kind of reminisce and have some healing time with the Lord as well with that. And so I went, met up with about uh, 60 to 80 students, just getting taught by Paul Manwaring, uh, Ben Fitzgerald, John Luke, healing evangelist from Switzerland, uh, as well as Daniel Kalenda from Skype, and Heidi Baker, an archation call as well from Skype. And that was just really powerful. And what I learned was just how you can actually do a stadium outreach supernaturally. Just so much with the team, with the Lord, and working with everyone, but also in in proper safety. It's not all about ooh, wow, we're following the Holy Spirit, you know, going forward. But there's actually uh, order. There's actually order in the kingdom. Order in the kingdom. How you set up the stadiums and how you actually reach outreach people. How you host the speakers. How you host different people and go to places. And that was was really interesting. And uh, one of uh, I guess I felt like I received an impartation from Daniel because we were doing a Q&A about Reinar Bonnke and that was just so beautiful hearing him hearing the stories from about Reinar Bonnke and one of the things that like I really got to me was that uh, Daniel would sit with uh, Ben sorry Daniel Daniel would sit with the Reinar and Reinar would say for myself I ask for nothing for God I ask for everything and that was for finances, for everything. And that was just rock, rock me. It was just like, wow. Like, I usually ask a lot for myself, but I don't really ask much for God that much. Like, that's really humbled me. It was like, it really empowered me. And then um, we were supposed to do a stadium tour of just seeing the Basel Stadium kind of grip and keep in mind because they're going to do a Rotterdam Stadium in July. Hopefully, when God willing, that that will happen in Jesus' name. Yes. Um, but that got canceled because of the whole coronavirus scare, and so they kind of canceled everything. But we were like, you know, we're, we're here. Why don't we just go out and evangelize and share the gospel? So we met on Saturday morning at the Laura Park yeah. and worshiped a little bit and then just prayed for people. And I got to pray for a couple of people, see them got touched. They were healed, but they were touched. Other people got saved. Two people, I think a lawyer got saved that yeah. morning. So it was just really cool just seeing that. Out of just spontaneous, hey, I don't want to just do this since the organization can't really do anything. Let's just go out. And so I want to share that. Yes, that's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, stand up for so Michael, he loves to evangelize. So the Lord put it on me and my wife's heart to, you know, we want to take care of evangelists, you know, like Thomas and his wife and and our brother here and. We're always asking, you know, if you guys want to go somewhere and you want to do something and God's calling you to it, we want to help you get there. You know, um, the financial blessing that's on me and my wife is something that is, is tremendously um, uh, amazing because it's because I purposely use that money to kick hell's gates down. Hallelujah. OK, every penny kicks the devil in the face, like straight kick to the chest. And so uh, the Lord has the ability to provide in a way where, you know, he puts out a Facebook ad, they put out a Facebook ad, the Lord speaks to me in the middle of the night and my ask my wife, what do you think? And she says, let's do it. You know what I mean? So there's an ability for us to create this evangelistic thing. And we didn't get a chance to talk about it tonight, but I spoke about it a little bit earlier. It's 127 countries, right? with the school yeah, yeah, that we yeah, want yeah, to do, right? Yeah. So his wife was interpreting today with the man in Brazil, where we're gonna get diplomatic community and we're gonna have 127 locations around the world where you can go and you can evangelize and we call you family. Yeah. The Brazilian man wanted everyone to know that we're family. Right. He didn't want to make it about his book. He didn't want to make it about his t-shirt. 
got a prophetic word he got. He wants to do what God has told him to do. And so we're going to need partners here to help us with That's this. That's right. We're going to establish the business here, which yes. establishes the diplomatic community, which the term is... Um, um, Immunity? No, it's... Uh, there was a term. So you build a, the company in the U.S. for one reason. Geneva. Yeah, that's right. So anyone who knows about international businesses or anyone who has international insight on businesses, I'd love to talk to you more about that. This man, he knows a lot about it. This is the guy. Actually, quick testimony. Yeah. Quick financial testimony. You're talking about how God blesses. So even God can bless even when things can go wrong. So I rented a car uh, during that trip. He actually had the dream about like what would happen with the car. That's right. Well, I accidentally scratched a portion of this car and it ended up fining me $1,500 for this, this two scratches that I had in the car. And I'm like, Lord, I sat with down with the Lord and I, I felt the weight of just this car. Like, man, this stinks. Like, I am, God blessed me with this car to drive around, to go to, to the school of angels and back from my Airbnb. This is not right. Like, Lord, please help me. And then I just prayed out and that was it. Well, uh, I come back from the trip I'm, a, I'm an accountant, I work, I just hired a new company. I was hired into a new company and uh, I check my paycheck and it's a full amount. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I go to the, ma ma the manager and he's like, well, let me check it with the, the people. And they're like, uh, I'm like, because I asked for, I, I, they said that I was gonna have an unpaid salary the week right. I was gone. And so he, looked at, he looked at me after, at the end of the day, he told, told me to close the door and said, Keep it as a bonus. It paid my charges. All right. Thank you, Mike. You were supposed to be there. We told you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so, and so that's you Thank know, you, that's always been our heart to do this. And Michael's been, you know, me and him have evangelized together, and we've seen miraculous healings. A guy with a, uh, the motorcycle guy that his leg got ripped off totally. He was in pain his whole life. Remember, the pain left. No more pain in his ankle. They actually had to cut his foot off and turn it back and sew it back on. Um, then after that, there's some glory hit on Main Street. And all of a sudden, was, we got to pray for my buddy. His wife's got cancer. So we laid hands on him. He got all wobbly. He started, they were all crying. And this man was like six foot seven, like 300 pounds, right? And he hugged me so hard, he cracked my back like a chiropractor. <laughs> and I was, I was doing the brother like, okay. And then he got tighter. And I'm like, uh oh. And so I couldn't let go. So he just hugged me forever. And then hugged him forever. And I think as soon as we turned the corner. But, but it wasn't. No, the demon possessed guy. Oh, the demon possessed guy. Remember, he was smoking the reefer. And then, we, and then he, he wanted, he was saying, what about me? That's what I heard. But he was really saying, you have a lighter. <laughs> and I walked up to him, I was like, quarter of our son. And he's all dead, I just need a lighter. And I'm like, Jesus doesn't want you to do that. He's like, okay, man. And then there was another guy that was strung out on that too, right? Right standing next to him. And then I told Michael, I go, now that we pray for him that he's received Jesus and his state of mind that he's in, he's going to follow us because he's going to follow the truth. And we took 15 steps forward, and the guy's like, and then he's. And then he kept following us, right? Yeah. So he followed us all the way down to the beach. And we got a chance to lay hands on him and minister to this guy again. It was great. So let's do some worship. Yes. And also, uh, there's plenty of food and drinks and water on the other side over here. If you guys want to help yourself with some cakes, please go over there and eat. Please, we don't want to take the food with us. Um, but we're going to enjoy the presence. And we're going we're gonna to just, you know, let's let the Holy Spirit just... Just fill us, and, and we'll just get this house filled with the, with the glory. I know people came in late, and there's some other people here that need to hear the music. I'm so yes. glad you're here. I had a dream about you. It was powerful. I was so glad to see you. You're so loved and known. Just know that, that this is your house, no matter what, okay? This will be my portion. Lay at 
and the sun was setting, there was this giant, these two giant clouds, and there was a veil torn before, you know, between the two. Now you can climb the ladder. Thank God. There's a portal opened over this house tonight. Hallelujah. Transferring of gold, everything that the evangelist was prophesying and, and his wife. That's exactly what God's been telling us in the spirit. So when you come to another house and you hear the same thing, you start getting excited because you know it's coming. It really is coming. So I want to encourage you right now by faith. And he said, you know, you got to activate your faith at the time of the visitation. By faith, come and invest into your own household. I just put mine in here. It's my first time here. I never do this. I never give. I don't usually give to a house I've never been to. But I just put mine in. Whatever you have, whatever you have, whatever you have by faith, by faith, that you can do by faith in joy, come and, and give. You're sowing into your own blessing. There's a thousandfold blessing on here according to Deuteronomy 111. There's a thousandfold blessing. Test it. Whatever you give, write it down. And write it down as a promise. And the day that God gives that back to you a thousand fold, you start jumping, you're going to be increased and God's going to break out. And he's going to do that same thousand fold blessing on your ministry, on your ministry too. So now's the time to come up, give your offering. But we just bless this house right now. We just bless this house. I just see glory on this house. I see rainbows. I see the ninefold uh, gifts of the spirit in the nine fruits of the Spirit manifesting. I see windows, I see doors, I see ladders, I see portals opening up, and I see a launching pad. I see an aircraft carrier launching out fighters, launching out fighters. And so, Lord, bless this house and keep it and cause your face to shine upon your people. Be gracious to them and give them peace in everything they do in Jesus' name. Amen.